Good morning, soldiers of the Salvation Army. My name is Paul Augustine. I am your Divisional Sergeant Major. Major Merritt has asked me to spend a few moments in, uh, as a welcome time to this virtual event to explain a little bit about what the Divisional Sergeant Major position is. So let me just share with you a little bit from uh, a reading here. The Divisional Sergeant Major will have his primary responsibility to act as a communication link between the soldiers and the Divisional Commander. In a concerted effort with the Assistant Divisional Sergeant Major, he or she is to secure information from soldiers throughout the division on their thoughts, concerns, and feelings and suggestions, summarizing information to the Divisional Commander. Uh, I ex gladly accepted this new position, feeling God has called me to it. And what I want to do in the months to come is visit you and your core. I want to come to see you. I want to hear your thoughts, your concerns in person. And we'll sit down as a family and around the table and share thoughts and concerns and also your good ideas. I want to hear what's working well in your home core. And we can share those with the rest of the division. We can all be better soldiers for the Lord. Uh, the division commanders asked me to share a few concerns and thoughts. Uh, we want to talk about, uh, I want to tell one other thing that's on my heart, and that is, my friends, is to have you get your nose in the Bible, okay? Um, I'm a big believer that a lot of our concerns, a lot of our issues in our families, our communities, can be answered if we get our nose in the Word of God. When I come to see you, I'm going to emphasize that to you, to make sure you have a good devotional time together with the Lord and getting in the Word of God. Thank you. Let's pray. Our Father, we praise you for who you are, a great and awesome God who cares for each one of us in an intimate way. Father, we thank you for each person tuning in to this broadcast uh, here this morning. We ask you, Father, to bless each one in a special way. Open, Holy Spirit, do your work. Open their ears, open their eyes to your word and to the spoken word and the written word to all the songs and other things that are being shared with us today. Father, we pray for our core, each one that's tuning in. Lord, you love them. You care for them. We want them to be prosper and, and grow in, in the, your knowledge of your word and of your work. Father, pray for the officers. Strengthen them as they do their work. And Lord, each soldier listening in, Father, this is for you. This is for you. We want to hear from you, my, our, our, our good people of the Lord. Father, we want to pray for the Christmas efforts coming up soon. And Lord, we pray that each one in the Corps will consider if they can help in this great effort to raise funds to help our Corps in their communities. Uh, we would pray, Father, for those uh, that are young adults, Lord, that might be thinking about full-time service as Salvation Army officer, that you would, the Holy Spirit would speak to hearts in different times, different ways, like the Youth Council is coming very soon in October. You would speak to those young minds and those young hearts about considering full-time service the greatest calling we can have as a soldier. Father, thank you so much for your love and your care for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today's call to worship. Quiet your soul, for this hour is holy. Let us draw near to him who hears our prayer. Let us remember he listens more to our hearts than to our words. May we worship him through our thoughts, through our actions, and through our words today. He's got the whole
God, we are so excited today that we can meet together for worship as a divisional family. God, we thank you for the Wisconsin Upper Michigan Division. We pray for each community in this division in which we serve. We pray that our core will be a lighthouse in our communities. That as we serve others in your name, we will also be pointing them to Jesus, the light of the world. God, we pray for our soldiers. We pray that we will daily put on the full armor of God and that we will be prepared to fight in the war against our enemy. The battle is fierce, but we know that we will have the victory. Equip us, Lord. Prepare your people. Help us to engage. Help us to see the needs. And Lord, please enlarge our territory. And may all this be done for the glory of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's a Salvation Army. We wear the, the shield and we're called the army because we, because we, we, we are an army and we're battling the evils of the world um, and, then, and then when you form an army you have to have leadership and you have to have have pawns and, and, and people below that um, and I pray that, that, that our leadership directs us controls us um, and that as we move forward my father always used to say I can always I can lead I can follow or I can get out of the way and in order to be able to do that it takes a great amount of power of God and I pray that our leadership um, is blessed by that, that they're guided by that, and that we continue to do the Lord's work. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Good morning. Let's take some time now to pray with for the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the core member the, you know, across the United States, across the world, that are worshiping you today and, and praising your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, and just be with each and every one of us as we know that we love you and we want you to be with us and guide us through what we need to do through worshiping you and be with the cores across the world that there is so much trouble in this world and just be supportive of all the cores around the world and in the united states and be with all the communities that, that are here that and that we can support them and they can support us so that we know that we are of one there are many problems in the communities, but we can help maybe make things better. Please, dear Jesus, just be with each and every one of us as we go through the next few days ahead to see what is going to happen with the things that are happening across the United States, across the world. Thank you, dear Jesus, for your love. We ask this in your name. Amen. Your grace is enough.
Lord, I, uh, I praise and thank you for all you've done for us. You've blessed the Salvation Armies uh, through the COVID, and you're still blessing us today, and you were blessing us before the COVID. Lord, you were blessing us before, before you were even uh, walking on the earth. So we praise you and, uh, and we thank you. We pray that we can also, that we spread your word so that other people may get a chance to experience the love of God. And uh, amen. Jesus, I want to thank you for being with us, for leading us, no matter how badly we mess up, you're still there to welcome us back, to forgive us, and for that I am thankful. Thank you.
Dear John, I want to thank you for for our core here in the uh, Manitowoc, uh, Wisconsin area. We uh, have a very good family here. We all look after one another and pray for one another during trying times and pleasant times. I can be, I am one to can, can confess to this for being sick with uh, cancer. I got numerous calls, texts, and concerns about my sickness and all when I was in the hospital. And we are a loving group that just looks after one another. We pray for our community, we pray for our lieutenant, and we enjoy the uh, camaraderie and the service that is here every Sunday morning. And we all believe in our good Lord Jesus Christ, praying for one another and practicing what the Lord leads us to do. And these things I pray for the Salvation Army of Manitowoc County. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you before your throne with a bowed head and a humble heart. Father, I ask that you open up the heavens and let your Holy Spirit come down and touch the spirits of each and every one of your children around the world. Let us connect with you, Father, as a whole, as your people. Let your church come together in unity. Let us help one another, love one another, uplift one another, encourage one another, strengthen one another, Father, in our time of need. Let us walk the path that our Savior Jesus Christ walked when he was down upon this earth. Let us follow in his footsteps, Father. Yes, we know we're not perfect. We know we have our flaws and our faults. But Father, we ask that you help us to come together in love and unity and in accordance with you. Father, you have written our past, our stories. You have planned our lives from the beginning. We ask that you just come, Father. Come and lead us. Lead your church into the next level. In your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And amen. So my testimony, my, my call to officership, the reason I'm here, the reason I have these bars on my shoulder was mostly because one, God is faithful, and two, he sent people into my life that helped bring me in, to help teach me about this gospel, and that helped train me up to be who I am in God. I could not have done this on my own. I could not have done this um, without the people that God had sent. I needed him. I needed his mercy and his grace to enter into my life. Now, I grew up in the Salvation Army, but if you would have asked me uh, 10 years ago, 5 years ago, um, even just a little more than 3 years ago, whether I wanted to be an officer, I would have said no. No with all of my might. Um, but in that, what God was doing in my life is he was giving me a love for his word. When I was in college, I had a leader in my life challenge me to read the Bible cover to cover, Genesis to Revelation, and that was a challenge that I was not quite ready for yet. I, I finished it, but it took me a little longer than I expected. I was like, oh, I can knock this out in a couple weeks. And no, it was more like a couple months to half a year. But in that, I learned to spend time with God in his word. I learned to, how, how to read this book 
for myself. I learned how to, to understand and how to get to know what God was saying to me and to us as his creation. And I had leaders come alongside and train me up. They taught me how to read it. They taught me how to study it. They taught me what kind of language the authors were writing in, whether it was poetry or history or allegory. Um, (laughs) Because there are parts that I just didn't understand. But in all of that, I saw God slowly moving in my life, slowly training me to be who he has called me to be, Today. Now, in that, I took some detours, um, as it were. I didn't jump right into Salvation Army ministry, but I jumped into another denomination. I was in the Evangelical Free Church for a little bit, and in that church, I, I learned so many things. I learned how to do church on a much larger scale than most of our cores. And then, God called me to another denomination, and in that I learned how to, how to study the Word just a little deeper and how to, how to dive into it with youth and, and young adults. And then eventually I had a call from an officer who's like, Hey, Chris, what are you doing? Um, I, I know that you're called to be an officer. I've known this for most of your life. And I had a lot of thinking time ahead of me for that. But in all of that time, I, I spent a couple weeks really diving into this topic. Like, can I go back to the Salvation Army? Like, is this, is this a good option for me? So I started to read. Now, I am a reader like no other. I, I can knock books out, um, and I like to read at least a book a week. So in that, I knocked out a lot of original Army books. I read some Brangle. I read some biographies on William Booth. I went through our Handbook of Doctrine. Um, And in all of that, I noticed something. I noticed something that the other churches I I was in wasn't doing. And that was inviting people from all walks of life. In my other churches, it was almost all middle to upper class. Most of the the kids I, I worked with came from millionaire households. But the Salvation Army was truly a church for all people to come into. That from the lowest to the millionaire, it was a place for all of them to be. It's also a fact that in Salvation Army, I had the most access to people who needed the gospel than I'd ever experienced before in my life. I always had to go out to the coffee shops, um, go out to different community sporting events to actually meet people in my community. But when I came to the Salvation Army, In the first week, I realized that people who need the gospel walk into our buildings on a daily basis. And in that, I get to meet with them. I get to talk with them. I get to form relationships with these people who need the gospel. And in that, I knew the Salvation Army was uniquely situated for people to grow God's kingdom like no church has before. Now, I'm not saying that we are the largest church, that we are the the, the best at evangelism, but I am saying that we have the best spot for evangelism. And in that, I knew that this was the place that God was calling me to. Because as I read the old army books about what happened in the past, how fast the army grew on this same dynamic of we're going to serve people and we are going to feed them physically and feed them spiritually to the point that we're going to bring them in, train them up, and send them back out. And I want that to be my life's call today. As the early army swiftly moved through England and the rest of the world, I want to be able to grow God's kingdom with people who don't know the gospel. And in that, that is how I came and am now called to be an officer in the Salvation Army. Good morning, everybody. I'm so excited to have you all join us for our worship service together. And we're going to, in a minute, be able to worship through our giving and our tithes and our offering. But I wanted to share some scripture with you before I pray for our offering. It comes from Psalm 100, and it says, Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. 
It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We are his people, and we get to worship together this morning as one great great big family, and I'm so excited to do that. So let me pray for our offering, and then you'll have an opportunity to give at your own core. Let's pray together. Lord, thank you for these moments together that we have to worship corporately with each other in our own buildings but uh, father we know that you are in each building and each person as we worship you today and lord right now i just pray that you would bless this offering i pray that it would build your kingdom and that lord you would use it to just bless your people in each of our own communities thank you today for this opportunity to give back to you in this way in jesus name we pray amen get into the boats and go ahead of him to the other side. He remained to send the crowds on their way. After the crowds were gone, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. By evening, he was there alone. The boat which the disciples had taken was by this time a long distance from the land, literally tormented by the waves, for the wind was against them. In the fourth watch, between 3 and 6 a.m., Jesus came to them walking on the sea, when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost. They cried out in fear. But Jesus spoke and said, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter, who was on the boat, said to Jesus, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Jesus answered, Come. Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But seeing the wind, he became frightened and began to sink. Lord, save me. Peter cried out. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and took hold of Peter and said, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? When Jesus and Peter got into the boat, the wind stopped. Those in the boat worshipped Jesus, saying, You, you are certainly God's son. Well, good morning. It's a wonderful opportunity we've had today on October 30th to have this united uh, worship service across the Wisconsin and Upper Michigan Division. I want to share the word with you this morning as we come in this way, united. I want to begin with 2 Timothy, the first chapter, the ninth verse says this. He, this being God himself, Jesus Christ, his son, he has saved us and called us to a holy life. Isn't that wonderful? Think about those words for a few minutes. He, Christ himself, has saved us, saved us from something. He has saved us and then not only saved us, he has placed us in his service. He's called us to a holy life. It says not because of anything that we've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. 
So we praise the Lord today as we come together on this day of worship because of what Christ has done for us, saving us, and then leading us into a holy life. That ought to resonate with the soldiers and friends of the Salvation Army across this wonderful Wisconsin and Upper Michigan Division. Farther on in 2 Timothy, the third chapter, there's this key verse. The first verse of the third chapter says, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. What does that mean, terrible times? Does anybody understand today, terrible times? This says that there will be terrible times, and not only that there will be terrible times, but there will be terrible times in the last days. Are we living in the last days? And a biblical understanding, wherever you see that description, the last days, I can assure you, we are living in the last days. Since Christ has come, as Christ has obediently gone to the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, ascended to the right hand of his Father, God, then the age of the church has begun. The age of the church beginning in the book of Acts really describes the last days. It really means that the last days are described as the church age. So yes, you and I are living in the church age, and so we are living in the last days days, and Paul is very definitive here, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. He goes on to describe what the terrible times may look like. Listen to this. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its powers and have nothing to do with these types of people. That's a description of the terrible times. Yes, you and I live in terrible times. We live at a time in the church age when the world is turning against God and all that God stands for. So where do you and I find ourselves today? We find ourselves with the promise of a firm foundation. I assure you today that we stand on a firm foundation. We stand on the faith in God and his foundation. It's unchanging. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. It'll be the same. So we stand as Christ soldiers on the firm foundation of our faith in God. We not only stand on this firm foundation, but then we are people that are committed to this faith. And by people that are committed to this faith, we not only stand on a firm foundation, but then we also follow the path that God has placed before us. That path and the way for that path forward is found through his son, Jesus Christ. So in these last days, these terrible times that the Bible describes for us, we have this wonderful hope that we have a firm foundation in faith in God, and we have a path forward following obediently his son, Jesus Christ. Paul also says in the fourth chapter of 2 Timothy, he says, so do this. What do we do in days like these? What do we do in this season? He says, then preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. So in these days, these terrible times that we find ourselves, the Salvation Army stands firmly on the foundation of faith in God that's unchanging, unmovable, doesn't change with the wind of society or the theories of the culture, and we follow obediently the path of his word, Jesus Christ. I want to share with you in the third chapter of Joshua, Joshua gave the word to people living in a terrible time and gave them a path forward. You'd know this account quite uh, clearly as God's people were standing on a flooded riverbank on the shores of the Jordan River at the springtime because of their terrible times, because of their disobedience. They have been roaming around in the wilderness, separated, lost, 
roaming around in circles for 40 years. Now they come to the Jordan River and God's going to lead them forward because his foundation is firm in our faith in God and his path forward is obediently following the word. The word came to Joshua and he shared it with the officers on that day and it says this. When they, after three days, the officers went throughout the camp giving orders to the people, when you see the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord our God, and the Levitical priest carrying it, you are to move out from your positions and follow it. There's a clear word in terrible times. What do we do? We want to be people that clearly see God. I share with you today that undoubtedly, in terrible times, God is on the move still. God is not frozen. God is not panicked. God is not hunkered down hiding somewhere. God is on the move. And so as his people, the word comes to us as it came to Joshua beside a flooded river and says, you want to be in a place where you can see God. So I challenge you today, across the Wisconsin and Upper Michigan Division, as a soldier, as a friend, as a member of the Salvation Army, you need to do whatever you need to do in your life, physically and spiritually, so you can have a clear view of who God is. That's key for us. To have a firm foundation in faith in God, we have to know who God is. You have to have a clear sense and a clear view of who God is. He is great, almighty, the one who reaches down and saves us, the one who gives the very breath in our lungs, the one who leads us forward, and we need to be people that have a clear view of who God is and be ready to obey his will as he continues to move forward. The word in that third verse says, so we have to have a clear view of who God is. You're doing that this morning. You're gathered across the division in the core centers. You're part of worship. That's a piece of being aware and putting yourself in a place to have a view of God. You need to do this on a day-to-day opportunity in your life. You need to do it step-by-step from Monday through Sunday in your life. You need to be people who have a clear view. Of God. Then it says, and then move out. You've heard me share this before. We need to be people that get up out of our selfishness. When we have a clear view of who God is, we realize really how small we are. And we understand that there's a God who's greater than us and has something far greater for us on the other side of a river. And so we want to get out of our stuckness. We want to get out of our selfishness. We want to get out of our isolation with a clear view of God and allow his spirit to move in us and among us. What does that look like? That looks like then in that third verse, not only having a clear view of who God is, not only doing what we need to do in our own lives to get up out of our, posi- our positions, but then we just flat out follow God. Isn't that wonderful? That in that verse, it gives us the clear steps to people just like you and I, salvationists, people across the Wisconsin and Upper Michigan Division that have a firm foundation, faith in God, have a path forward through his son, Jesus Christ, so we have a clear view of God and he's on the move. We then get ourselves, do whatever we need to do to lay down the baggage. The author of Hebrews says, do whatever you need to do on this race of life to unentangle yourselves and the sin that so easily ensnares us and entangles us and get ourselves ready to follow. And then just to flat out follow God. Why would we do this? Well, the fourth verse says, then you will know which way to go since we've never been this way before. So we know where we're going because we have a clear view of God. We know what we have to do in our own lives because when we have a clear view of God, we see our sinfulness. We understand that there's things that need to be forgiven in our lives so that we are no longer stuck or left behind the movement of God, but we are ready to flat out follow him and do 
accomplish all that he wants to have accomplished in our lives. Look if, with me, if you will, for a few minutes in the Gospel of Luke. The ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke says this. Jesus is describing individuals just like you and I that are following Jesus. It says this in the ninth chapter of Luke, beginning at the 57th verse. Luke 9, 57 says this. Jesus with his disciples, as they were walking along the road, a man said to him, I'll follow you wherever you go. Jesus replied, foxes have dens, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. He said to another man, follow me. But he replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, and you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Still another said, I'll follow you, Lord, but first let me go back and say goodbye to my family. These three individuals all wanted to follow Jesus, but I believe they all had a sense of selfishness in one form or another. I believe they were all like the Israelites on the side of a flooded riverbank, and in their own selfishness, they became stuck where they are and didn't truly understand full obedience in following God. Jesus said in the 62nd verse, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for service in the kingdom of God. What is Jesus describing? The plow is a, a tool that's used to turn over the earth. It's something that you use today in order to receive something in the future, you understand. You turn over the earth so that you can prepare the soil, so that you can do what needs to be done, so that you can plant seeds in it, and in the future there will be fruit. And so Jesus says to you and I this morning, as we want to have a clear view of God and a firm foundation of faith in his way, we want to get out of our own way, our selfishness, and we want to follow him, God says this, the one who puts his hand to the plow, that's you and me in the Salvation Army, the one that actually throws herself upon the plow, I want to call the plow this morning the ministry, the service that God has placed each and every one of us in. As we have placed ourselves upon the plow and we look back, we, if we look back, we're not fit for service in the kingdom of God. That word fit means well placed. God has us well placed. God has us upon the plow. God has us in his service. Stay focused. Have a clear view of who God is. Continue to do what needs to be done in each of our lives to ask for forgiveness of our sin, to be able to continue to confess our sins before our Heavenly Father so that we can continue to move forward, not looking back to yesterday, but continuing to have a clear view of tomorrow. As we then are well placed for service in the kingdom of God, there will be something that will happen Times we live in terrible times today, but we have an opportunity for even better days in the future. If you go back to Joshua, the third chapter, the fifth verse says this. Joshua told the people, consecrate yourselves. That means separate yourself. Be set apart. That's a difficult command for many of us. Consecrate yourselves. For tomorrow, the Lord will do amazing things among you. You understand, as God's people cross the Jordan River, the Jordan River in the 17th verse says that they stood in the middle of the Jordan River and stood on dry ground while all of Israel passed. The entire nation had completely crossed on dry ground. I share with you, we have a firm foundation in the midst of whatever is happening in your own life today. We have a firm foundation if we hold on to our faith in God and we obediently follow his path for us, only found through his son, Jesus Christ. Regardless of where you find yourself today, 
consecrate yourself and allow God's tomorrow to be even more powerful and effective as you give not just part of your life or some of your life to him, but as we together give all of our lives to the glory of God, who we see, who we obey, and who we follow. May it be so in my life. May it be so in our lives across the Wisconsin and Upper Michigan Division as we continue to move forward into a better tomorrow for the glory of God. God bless you today. come to the conclusion of this wonderful united worship service together. It's been wonderful to gather in this way. I also want to share again that it's so wonderful when Major Christine and I have an opportunity to travel around the division and to worship and to be with you in your own locations. As we close this time together today, as we think about all that's taken place, the words that come to my mind in a benediction, in a closing, or out of the Salvation Army songbook with a wonderful song called Trust and Obey. Let me just read the first and fifth verses of these words for you, if you're not familiar with them. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who trust and obey. The fifth verse says, then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says, we will do. Where he sends, we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. And in closing, Paul's words in the, to the church in Ephesus in the third chapter says these words together in our united benediction. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And together we say, amen. <laughs>